Hello everyone, this is Daniel, aka B-Belt Dan, and welcome to episode 4 of this ventriloquist dummy build. Where we left off in the last episode is I started actually 3D printing the base or the foundation of where a lot of these mechanisms are going to be mounted and built upon. And from that last episode, I have the base right here. It is completely 3D printed and I'm ready to go ahead and start assembling some of this and start working on a lot of the mechanisms. All of those mechanisms and everything is all going to be somehow mounted and built upon this particular foundation or this base right here that is going to be fitting into the front right here. But to start this episode, I would like to go ahead and just real quick kind of explain to you the my ideas and my thought process of how I'm wanting this entire puppet to work. So let me go ahead and show you that. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and draw out the ideas that I have for the mechanism, starting with the eyes. The eyes, you know, we have the two eyes here, you know, I1 and I2. And going down the center of them are the two posts, like that, that they're going to pivot on, like that. And the nose connect to these two little stalks, which connect to the base that we've demonstrated and that I showed you earlier, like that. Now, to get it to where the eyes are going to move side to side, on the back of the eyes are going to be two little points, just like that. They're going to be 3D printed just like that and those two points are connected together by another bar and that bar is going to have another bar that comes out like this bends this way and then goes down into the neck to the mechanism if we go ahead and let's say we look at it from an overhead view it should look similar to this i1 i2 post post a bar connected between the two and this is going to be the control rod right here. So we have the post, there's the base. So as you move this, or let's say this turns here. So as this turns this way, this part is going to go that way, which is going to cause both of the eyes to move in that direction. And vice versa. If we go turn this way, this is going, it's going to cause this to kick out, move in that direction, and then the eyes are going to go that direction. So the eyes are pretty much straightforward. Uh, moving down though to the blinking mechanism, um, what that's going to be is that we have the eyes here, like so, and so I'm going to have the 3D printed eyelids like that right there. And that is connected to a base right there that's going to be connected to the stocks that the eye pivots on. But the eyelids and this right here is going to be totally separate from all of this right here. It's independent, so the eyes can move without moving these eyelids. Now, to get them to move, there's going to be a... Uh, there are several different ways I could do it. The way I'm going to try is that coming off of the back is going to be another post like that that's in between the two eyelids. So we have an eyelid here and an eyelid here. Here are the eyes like that if y'all can see that and then we have the posts going together like that two posts go right there for pivots so on this post right here is going to be a piece that comes out from the back and that's going to be tied to a spring that is tied to the base and that keeps the eyelid open now to close it right up here in the area where the nose is at so there should be hopefully plenty of room that's going to be a string is going to be tied to that that's going to run down to a pulley that's between the two eyes that goes possibly to another pulley and that goes down into the control rod mechanisms to a trigger so when you pull the trigger that pulls the rope down therefore pulling this down which closes the eyes and by releasing the rope the tension of the spring snaps everything back. So that's what I'm thinking about doing as far as those eyes are concerned. Uh, the mouth mechanism is going to be coming off of the base. So here we have the mouth making, um, you know, we'll call that, we'll call this like the jaw here. 
and we have the mouth like that on a pivot because this is where it opens and closes and there are several different ways we can do this uh, the more traditional way is very similar to how the eyelid blanket mechanism works and I've done this with other puppets is we have a piece that sticks out from here and this is going to be tied to a spring that is also tied to the base of so the spring keeps this oops I'm sorry no wrong way wrong way wrong way well you if you could be compression spring but no it's, it goes down and it ties to something tied to the base right there and this pulls this down which keeps the mouth up and then we have a spring that or a string and the string can be connected on the inside going out through here onto another pulley that goes down so when you pull this it pulls that opening up the mouth adding tension to the spring and then by releasing this the spring snaps this all back and into a closed position so that's kind of one way that we're going to be looking at how to do this uh, another way uh, which i'm going to try is using a a spring so instead of here the spring being here we have the mouth you know there here's the jaw line but the spring is actually going to be in here so we have a spring tied into to the mouth tied into here and so that spring is what keeps this closed and to open it down here at the bottom we'll have like a little post with a um, string that comes up to a pulley that goes up and then that goes down into the mechanism so when this pulls you pull this string down it pulls this part up therefore opening the mouth like that so that's how i'm thinking about doing that and the final mechanism is the eyebrow mechanism which that right there is almost a rinse and repeat of a lot of these mechanisms is you have the eyebrows now here's the eyes and you have the eyebrows but there's going to be two rods that are connected to the eyebrows that go in through the skull here's a side view of it so we have two rods that go through the skull connected to the eyebrows right there and there will be springs that are connected to the base of the skull or I could use springs like this to keep it into its uh, neutral, relaxed position. And then from the back, there is another post with the string tied to it that goes down into that control rod mechanism. Where when you pull the string down, it causes the eyebrows to go up like that. So hopefully this all makes sense. And if it doesn't, as I go through and I build all this out... It should start making sense from there so all we got to do is just build this so let's go ahead and get to it let's see those are the areas i'm going to trim it down and i want to do very you know take off small amounts at a time and then test fit it you know because i can always reprint it but it just takes time to reprint i'm not too worried about the filament but just mostly with the time so i want to play this safe so i'm going to go ahead and Crank this up a little bit and go ahead and get started. So we have it right there, as you see, just slightly down there, slightly down there. That's all I need. And I do know that really what this is doing is it's more of melting the plastic than really than taking it away. Uh, but that's okay. That's what I want. I'm just using this to just really try to get a bunch of the, you know, the bulk of the material off. If I want to finesse it, I'll come in with some hand files and do it. Let's go ahead and put this in and see if it can re-evaluate. Make sure it's in there straight. And... Yeah, it looks like there is a bit of a better fit there, so we're getting good. And uh, looking good, a little bit of a better fit right there. So I'm just going to just continue doing this back and forth, back and forth, back and forth to get it to where I'm happy with the way that it sits in. And then from there, I can go ahead 
re-put in all the mechanisms that I've already uh, got printed and ready to place in there and make sure that they're, you know, at the right heights, the right distance and everything like that. Then I'll finish with those and I'll come back in. This is what I have so far. I have one of the eyes minus the blinking eyelids. Pretty much done. Uh, I'm going to redo this, but I'll come back to that a little bit later. And I have the basics of the mouth mechanism here. It doesn't have any spring. It doesn't have any uh, pulley or, you know, where do I to attach the string, but it's on its hinge. I just got to take the front portion of the mouth, which is right here, and eventually attach that on like that, and then insert it into the skull, attach this whole piece into the skull, or the whole head into the skull in one piece, and we should be able to be ready to rock on that. So now what I need to do is I need to take what I did on this side and mimic it for this side right here. And then from there, I can go ahead and figure out the best method for the eye blink method for the eyelids and also attach the two eyes together to where they can move in sync at one point to, in order to make this work. And then from there, it's just, you know, finalizing everything, uh, making the eyes, decorating them the way they need to be. I want to put some supports here because even though this is 3D printed, I don't want to go off of the 3D prints, the strengths of 3D prints itself. So as you could probably see right there on the mouth is I am reinforcing all of this with, especially where we have the screws going in with, um, you know, with some of this aluminum. So I'm going to also go ahead, like right here on the outside, take, hello puppy, you know, take the aluminum, put it in, attach it, cup through, throw a couple screws into where it'd be, uh, you know, fastened into this, drill the holes. And so therefore these screws are going to be going in through the metal. So, cause I'm worried about the screws over time, it's going to start wearing the hole bigger and bigger and bigger inside this plastic, or it could potentially break or the layer lines could bust. So that's why I want to go ahead and try to get that support. So I'm also going to be doing that. So I'm making leeway, but I still got a bit of a ways to go. So starting off, copying this, what I am going to do is uh, I'm going to remake this. And that is because the, the holes here, I feel like they're just a little bit too big, and plus I'm going to do something else with the eyelids because of the amount of space that I have or the lack of space that I have. So I'm going to redo this. But as far as the basic shape is concerned and where the holes are drilled at for the eyelids to go into, that's all pretty much sound. So I just need to take this and mimic it on another piece. So how am I going to do that? Well, I'm going to go ahead and show you if I can. Ah, here it is. I'm going to take a piece of this oops, tape here and I'm going to lay it on just like that. There we go. There we go. And then I'm going to take a Sharpie and go in and draw the outline. of this shape i'll go back in and clean it up and also i'm going to go ahead and place the spot a little two little dots of where the holes are going to be there we go there we go Put a little dot right there and a little dot right there there we go then i'm going to go ahead and take that off and voila that's the pattern that i need to do so uh just so i don't have to do this more than once because not only am i going to copy it on this side but i'm also going to redo this side i'm going to take a piece of cardboard here Stick that on. 
like so. Get some scissors and go ahead and cut that out. That way I can use this temp this cardboard template that should be a little bit sturdier to go ahead and copy this design onto the other pieces of the aluminum. There we go. Cut that piece off. Like that and just to poke the holes I'm going to go ahead and uh, let me see ah, I guess I'll use this screw just go ahead and there we go one and wish I had like a Piece, I don't want to do it on this, but a piece of wood that would work. Let me work on this. Two that didn't go all the way through, but I'll take care of that a little later. And three. There we go. So now I can take this and lay that on the next piece of metal that I need. And go in with my Sharpie to lay that out. There we go. That's the piece that I need to go ahead and cut out. So I'm going to do this on another piece here. Take these outside. Go ahead and uh, on the bandsaw. While it's flat, it's going to be easier for me to work on this while it's flat first. So drill all the necessary holes. Cut out the necessary profiles. Then I can work it flat. And then slowly start bending it into the shape that I need. And start working it into the other base for this. So let me go ahead and do that. And then when I come back in, we should have hopefully both eyes done. Oh, before I do that though, what I'm planning on doing is I went to the store and I found some of this copper tubing here, which is or brass tubing, which is a much smaller diameter for that. So I could drill a smaller hole, have a thinner piece of copper in there. Say the cop or this, not copper, I'm sorry, this brass. This brass is going to act as kind of a bearing almost in itself. And then I found this, I call it instrument wire, but it's it's a steel wire. It's flexible, but at the same time, it's very uh, tough. So I think I can bend this into the shape of the uh, eyelids that I'm wanting. So this would give that eyelid rigidity, rid, rigid, 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 well, you know, know what I mean. Make it a lot more rigid. And then it'll be able to fit in through that, through that copper, or, I'm sorry, through the brass tubing and be able to have enough clearance between here and the eyeball. If I get the eyeball and put it back in. So I only got so much clearance here between the eyeball, but I think I'd be able to bend that into that nice 90 degree angle that I need to get it over to here back through. And so there'll be enough clearance to where the eyebrow can still move. I'm just gonna have to figure out the way that I want to have it to where it's not gonna have much side to side. Well, I can just do it on there. I can just bend it and that should hopefully stop side to side movement. And then the eyelid itself is going to be 3D printed and I'll figure out a way to where we can best get it to where it'll fasten on to this piece, but I'll figure that all out. But let me go ahead and get that eyebrow or this other eyelid mechanism working. So maybe by the end of this episode, I'll have a working eyebrow mechanism, at least what's going to be in the head, not what's going to be running down to the... All right, as you can tell from my desk, it is a complete mess. I've been working on this entire thing for... Uh, some time now and you ever heard of the expression you know don't reinvent the wheel and it's almost kind of what I'm doing I know how the ventriloquist puppets operate but I don't know me I want to try to find kind of my own way you know my own little uh, signature so to say and try to improve upon the mechanisms you know making them smaller making them 
uh, easier to fix, uh, you know, that type of stuff. And I really don't know if I'm actually doing that, but let me show you what I got. Uh, a lot of this is just experimenting with things and I still need to do some experimenting, but trying to make, let's say like the mouth mechanism, I was struggling with that. Well, actually, tell you what, let me go ahead and show you what I got so far for the eyes. So as we can see here, I have the eyes uh, done. Uh, well, at least just the mechanism of where it's moving side to side. Uh, so the eye blinking mechanism I'm still working on, but as far as the mouth, um, that was interesting. And long story short, uh, I was trying to avoid having like a piece of, you know, something coming out of this and then a spring attached to something and, you know, that's going to snap it back into place. I wanted to try to make everything a little bit more condensed. And so I was trying to struggle with uh, different little solutions. And then it finally dawned on me, well, there's springs called torsion springs. And, um, and I was going to use that to help keep this mouth, you know, in line and to snap it back into place. The problem is, is that most of the places that I was looking at didn't have torsion string or springs and I could find them online, but then it finally dawned on me. There are torsion springs out there that you could find at just about anywhere. And yeah, that's what, that's what these are right here. This here is basically a small torsion spring. Now I did buy torsion springs at hardware stores, but they were much too stiff. Uh, these right here seem to be adequate, just the right amount of stiffness of what I am needing. All I need to do is just clip off that point, clip off the head right there and do some couple of bends and then slip it in. And then everything seems to be hunky dory. In fact, I've already gotten it uh, one on this side. I'm going to do both sides and I'm going to also maybe get some pieces of some Teflon uh, Just like what I have here to fit between there as a bit of a gap to keep this Equal distance, but as you can see Yeah, there it goes it works so if I take so my next step plan is to take This cut it down just a little bit. It's a little too long drill a hole, tap it, and put this inside. And that's where the spring, or not the spring, the string is going to be attached. It's going to run up to a pulley system that is tied to this. So as this gets pulled up by that string that is tied down to the mechanism at the bottom, this pulls it back. And when you release it, it'll snap back, as you see right there. And said that one spring, one spring might be enough. I'm going to go ahead and put two on both sides. And I think that should give it just enough tension to where, once again, the weight of the mouth is not going to allow this to flop around. So I'm going to go ahead and make this, because this all, I don't like the way this looks, but I'm going to make this look all a little bit better. In fact, I'm even going to go ahead, and now that I have an idea of what I'm doing here, I'm going to attach the front piece of the mouth to this right here like that and anchor that in and then we should have uh, this or at least the mouth and this part done and all I gotta do is figure out once again the eye blinking mechanism then I could put it into the head and then we can really you know start getting the ball rolling on this entire project so there we are and after a bit of experimenting a lot of tinkering around and a couple of revisions that you could probably see because this is now a different color plastic right here. The mouthpiece is now completed. The entire mechanism is working. Uh, I did have to change, like I mentioned, a, a few extra things. The paper clip situation, it could work, but um, I decided to try, go ahead and try something else. I mean, it was kind of working, but I had to rearrange a few things. Uh, so what I did is I just took a regular spring that you compress, cut it, and turned it in kind of a makeshift uh, torsion spring and put that in there. And it's working out much, much better than what the paper clip was actually doing. So there it is. In fact, I was so confident with the way that this mechanism works, I've already went ahead and 
glued the jaw piece in right here. So now it is ready for me to go ahead and start actually uh, filling this in, putting sculpting in some details such as teeth and the tongue and everything like that. And with that, I can also go ahead and start seriously thinking of putting it into the front portion of the head just like that. And there we go. So now this is telling me a lot. So this is really helping me out so I can now start really moving forward and doing this project, making uh, leaps and bounds forward in the progression of this. With this, I could see areas of where I need to go ahead and start filing down some of this to get a little bit more uh, freedom of movement in the mouth, freedom of movement in the eyes, and eventually make space for the eyelids as well. The eye blinking mechanism is the only mechanism that I am working on that is preventing me from actually fastening this into the skull itself or into the top portion of the head. So once I get that eye blink mechanism all worked out, I can go ahead, fasten this in, and then start working on running all the mechanisms down into the neck area of where the control mechanism is going to be. Then I can close this all up with the back portion there and start working on, you know, uh, finalizing the actual head itself. Then from there, it's just making the body, making the, uh, the hands and painting and all that type of stuff, and then I should be done. With that being said, that concludes this episode. Uh, didn't look like that I may have gotten a lot of work done, but in reality, I did, because trying to figure out that mouth mechanism was probably one of the hardest things that I think that I'm going to try to encounter on this project. So by doing that, once again, every bit of progression from this point should be, once again, leaps and bounds. So by the next episode, I should have a lot more of this done, if not at least all the mechanisms, including eyebrow and the blinking mechanisms, completed. So, but until then, I just want to say thank you for watching. This is... Daniel, a.k.a. B-Belt Dan, uh, and see you in the next episode.